Hi friends, in this video we will discuss regarding a very important topic of negotiable instrument that is holder and holder in due course. First of all, who is a holder? Negotiable Instrument Act Section 8 defines the term holder. Now under Section 8 it has been given that a holder is a person who has the possession of the negotiable instrument plus he or she has a right to receive and recover the amount thereon from the parties thereto. It means we can say that holder is a person who has the possession. It means he holds the negotiable instrument plus he has the right to recover. It means he is the owner. Now in case of bill of exchange, holder is always the drawer. In case of promissory note, holder is the pay. In case of a check, holder is the customer. Now to prove yourself to be holder in the court of law, a person must has the following characteristics, the following essentials. First is both the ingredients that we just read. The person should have the possession plus the person should have the right to receive the payment also. Second, the possession must be coextensive with having the right to possess. It means the person having the possession of the instrument must have a legal right also that he or she can recover the amount thereon. Only having possession does not make you the holder. You have a legal right also. It means a thief who has taken the possession of negotiable instrument or any person who has taken it under a forged endorsement, you will not call him the holder. Third is holder is the holder even if the instrument is lost or destroyed. It means if the person loses the negotiable instrument, still he or she will be known as the holder in the eyes of law. Fourth is legally entitled in his own name. The holder is a person whose name is there on the instrument and he has the legal right to have possession as well as payment. In case of order instrument, we all know the name is written on the negotiable instrument. So if it is a promissory note, the payee is the holder as his name has been stated on the promissory note. If we talk about bill of exchange, then the drawer is the holder. Now, if the order instrument has to be transferred, to whom it has been transferred will become the holder. While in case of bearer instrument, just by giving the possession, other person will become the owner. As I told you, in case of bearer instrument, you have the custody, you only have to give the custody to other person, the other person will be becoming the owner. So now we can say that holder means any person who is the pay. In case of bearer instrument, who has the possession and if the instrument has been endorsed, whose name has been written uh, or we can call him the endorsee, he will become the holder of the negotiable instrument. Now, next topic comes who is holder in due course then. Now, as we discussed, section 8 was dealing with holder and section 9 will be dealing with holder in due course. These are two important sections that you should learn. Now, first of all, let us discuss who is a holder in due course. Now, for this, let us take one example. A person, Joy, has given the bearer instrument to his servant and the instrument has been given to keep the instrument in the safe custody. So now Joy has transferred the instrument to a servant. Now Joy was the holder. Why? Because Joy's name is there on the instrument and he has the possession as well as legal entitlement. When the instrument comes in the hand of servant, there is no ownership. Why? Because the title is still with Joy. Now what the servant has done? Servant has given the instrument to another person, Anu, and without telling it to Joy. Now, Anu has obtained the instrument for value. Value means after giving the consideration and she was not having any idea regarding the defective title of the servant. Anu was not knowing that the title of the servant is not uh, effective. It is defective. So, Anu has worked in good faith without having any knowledge of defective title. So, Anu will be called holder in due course. She has the possession as well as good title. This is how a person Joy was the holder and now Anu is holder in due course. Now next comes, uh, we can just clarify this example more. Now here the Joy was the holder under section 8. She was having the legal ownership as well as possession. The servant, he did not have the legal ownership. His title was defective. So he was neither the owner nor holder in due course. 
Anu has obtained the instrument in good faith for value, so she will be holder in due course, and her title will be considered to be effective title. Now, a holder in due course is a person who is going to fulfill the following characteristics. First is he receives the instrument as bearer, as payee, or in dotsi. It means he or she has not stolen the instrument. He or she has not taken the instrument under coercion from somebody. Rather. either he is the bearer or he is the pay or he is the endorser bearer will be in case of bearer instrument pay and endorsee will be in case of the order instrument second is the person should have got the possession for consideration it means it is not free of cost something has been given something valuable has been given to take that instrument so whenever you are getting an instrument free of cost you are not holder in due course to be a holder in due course it should be coming to you after giving some consideration so last line is important if a person has taken it by gift or unlawful consideration it will not be holder in due course third is the instrument should have come in the hands of holder in due course before the maturity after the maturity there is no existence of the instrument so if you want to prove in the court of law that the you are the holder in due course then it should come into your hands before the maturity the person obtaining an instrument after the maturity will not be a holder in due course and the title will not be effective fourth is you have to work in good faith it means you have sufficient cause to believe that there is no defect in the title of the person from whom you are receiving the goods so holder in due course has to work in good faith you have to work in honesty and you should have no ground to have even a doubt in your mind that the person from whom you are taking the negotiable instrument has defective title so in the for, below given cases the holder in due course did not receive the instrument in good faith first a person takes an instrument on which some overwriting was done overwriting can be noticed very easily so such instruments will not be considered to be having holder in due course if any instrument is torn so there will be a doubt that why the instrument is torn so and it's some something has been pasted on it so if you are not going into depth of it you are not holder in due course if you have taken any instrument negligibly without having sufficient inquiries then you will not be holder in due course it means you have to work in good faith fourth is fifth point is the instrument should be complete and regular if you want yourself to be holder in due course you have to check whether the instrument is complete and regular it means regularly how the instrument is there what is the general tendency so there should not be any important defect only then you can be holder in due course so an instrument will be said to be defective if it is incomplete for example the name of drawer is not written if there is no date if it is not stamped and stamping is a requirement and the instrument comes with the unusual marks for example there are some noting protesting done you have to check why it is done any improper endorsement is done there is a way to endorse the instrument so if the instrument is not properly endorsed the doubt which should come in your mind if there is no doubt in your mind you are not holder in due course now after discussing regarding the holder and holder in due course we can now find out that there are some point of distinction now this topic is very important from the examination point of view first is the section it holder has been given under section 8 while holder in due course has been given under section 9 of negotiable instrument act and what does the definition say a holder is a person who has the possession and has a right to receive or recover the amount how about holder in due course holder in due course means who has taken the instrument for consideration before the maturity and in the good faith without having sufficient cause to believe that any defect exist in the title consideration it is presumed that every holder must have obtained the instrument for a consideration while holder in due course has to show he has to prove that he has taken the instrument in good faith for consideration good title if the title of the transferer is defective holder will not get a good title but it is not the case in case of holder in due course even if the title of transferer is defective holder in due course will be getting a good title then liability of the transferer a holder can only sue the transferer not the earlier parties but holder in due course can sue all the prior parties till his claim is satisfied prior parties means 
if the instrument has been endorsed from a to b b to c like that so in such case the holder in due course has a right that he can sue any of the prior parties a holder will not be able to recover the amount if the instrument is incomplete but holder in due course as we know he is an honest person even though it is incomplete very small blanks he can fill and he can recover the amount also what are the privileges holder has not been given any privileges under the act while holder in due course has been given many privileges under the act this is the example if we have already done joy is tra is transferring to a thief so joy is considered to be here the holder and anu is considered to be in the previous example holder in due course so whenever a thief stole any um, amount or any instrument from joy and transferred it to anu joy is the holder while anu is going to be the holder in due course now next very important topic under this point is there are some privileges which are not given to holder these are given to holder in due course right so a holder in due course can just tell in the court of law that i need these privileges first is presumption under section 118 we have already discussed under the characteristics of uh, negotiable instrument that there are certain presumptions presumptions means court presumes these things you need not cry and prove in the court that i am holder in due course no every holder is deemed to be holder in due course this is a privilege given to holder in due course when you are a holder and there is no doubt against you you will be considered to be holder in due course if any other person has some doubt he or she can prove in the court otherwise court will not ask for any clarifications he or she will be considered you considering you to be holder in due course the second point is privilege against incohate stamped instrument if there is incohate means that is incomplete and it is a stamped instrument it comes in the hands of holder in due course and then the holder in due course has a privilege a right that he can recover the amount even though instrument is incomplete still holder in due course can recover the amount it is a privilege third liability of the prior parties under section 36 all the prior parties prior parties means all the previous endorsers will be liable to holder in due course till the time instrument is satisfied so un until the claim of holder in due course is satisfied all the prior parties will be liable then is fictitious drawer or pay under section 42 in case the bill was drawn for a person who is not in actually existence so it was a fictitious bill and finally it comes in the hands of holder in due course so from where the uh, can the holder in due course recover the amount yes this is a privilege given to holder in due course even though original drawee was fictitious but all the prior parties maybe the drawer who has created the bill he will be liable to holder in due course because holder in due course is an honest person and he has got it after giving reasonable consideration then comes no effect of conditional delivery generally we say that negotiable instrument cannot be conditional so but sometimes a negotiable instrument is transferred depending upon a certain condition and or a special purpose and later on that instrument comes in the hand of holder in due course so holder in due course cannot be denied the payment nobody can say i have put a condition no once it comes in the hand of holder in due course you have to make the payment to holder in due course without any prior conditions under section 46 then is instrument cured of all the prior defects under section 58 if your instrument was uh, like having some problem it was incomplete or some things were missing it means some defects were there but once it comes in the hands of holder in due course it is cured from all the defects now it is a pure instrument nobody can challenge it seventh point is estoppel against denying the original validity of the instrument under section 120 this is a privilege given to holder in due course that earlier parties cannot deny the original validity of the instrument originally the instrument was not valid or originally the instrument was incomplete these please will not go holder in due course will be recovering the money it is a privilege given so we can say that a payment to holder in due course cannot be denied on the ground that the instrument was when it was made it was not valid maybe it was not valid but if it comes in the hand of holder in due course it has become valid eighth point is estoppel against denying capacity of pay to endorse now 
if any party takes the plea he or she says that the person who has transferred it was not capable to transfer or the payee or endorser endorsee was not capable capable means he or she was a minor or unsound mind so under section 121 this is a privilege given to holder in due course that nobody can say nobody can deny the payment to holder in due course on the ground that earlier parties were not capable to transfer or to design the instrument holder in due course will get the payment for sure and then the last point is estoppel against denying signatures or capacity of the prior parties under section 122 now this point is also similar to previous two points you are estopped you cannot deny that earlier signatures were not up to the mark the prior parties were not capable so this plea will not go in the court of law that the signatures of prior parties were forged or the prior parties were incompetent no you will have to make the payment to holder in due course and you will be liable to make the payment so these are the privileges given to holder in due course and the person who has become the holder will need not prove in the court he or she will be holder in due course in the eyes of law thank you